Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. Gary, what outdoor adventure are we going to be taking this week? Well, Simon, uh, like we talked about last week, turkey hunt, we're going to talk about the different types of gear, uh, uh, the calls, to what you'll need to be a more successful turkey hunter. And I will preface this with get your recorder and recording devices out because Gary's going to do some calls in this week's shows. And uh, if you just take those to the field, well, better just mi- mimic them so you're not uh, uh, taking advantage of any illegal activity. But Gary's going to show us some calls, get us geared up, and just gives us some general tips and tactics to hopefully help us be more successful when we're chasing down one of Mother Nature's, Gary, maybe not most intelligent birds, but they certainly have some keen senses. Yeah, you bet. Uh, they're hearing if, uh, you know, on a windy day, if you can call, you can hardly hear your call. That Tom can pinpoint it from, I don't know how far away. they got tremendous hearing. And, of course, their sight. You don't dare move uh, once you see the Tom. And that's why some of these calls work better than others when the bird does appear. Gary, I know turkey hunting is something that's really near and dear to you. One thing that gets you about as excited as, well, anything I've ever seen. Talk about your start. Oh, I started in the 70s uh, when I first moved to Nebraska. Didn't have a clue how to hunt turkeys. Back then in Nebraska, you had to have a call. So the cheapest one and and the quickest one for me to get was uh, the diaphragm call, the one you use in your mouth. I had no idea how to use it. I tried it. Uh, most of the time I was hacking and gagging, so I had it along anyway. And we, uh, I and two friends went out, and I don't think any of us had a clue, you know, what the turkey sounded like. We probably all thought that all turkeys did was gobble. So uh, we, we had a good time, a good trip, but uh, we were very unsuccessful. But from that point on, I, I wasn't going to let something with a brain the size of a wall that beat up on me. Thank you, Gary, for the great information. Look forward to hearing more as the week rolls on. Thank you as well for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic, spring turkey hunting. And Gary, to be successful in this sport, you need to know a little bit about what you're after and how to talk to them. In the spring, you know, a lot of people think turkeys are dumber than a post because in the winter, you have to honk at them to get them off the road. There's in a farm place they're all over. In the winter, they bunch up, and they've got one thing on their mind, and that's surviving the winter. But once the spring hits, that gobbler's got one thing on his mind, and that's mating. And uh, they'll try to gather as many hens as they can, and they'll do it by, by gobbling and by strutting. And they're willing to fight for it, too. So once you learn to, to talk turkey, to say the right words, uh, chances are you're going to uh, bring that either that tom in or that, that hen in, and you're going to have a better opportunity at getting a shot. Well, let's, let's get a little brief demonstration, Gary, on the different calls. There's a box call, there's the slate calls, and then there's that diaphragm or mouth call. Yeah, you bet. The basic thing with turkey calling is just a rhythm. Box calls are the easiest to use. Basically, you just hold them in the palm of your hand. Don't hold them too tight. Grab the paddle, put a little pressure on it, and it's just uh, it's just a rhythm. The first one is a long, drawn out. You're scraping across the box, which is, and then the rest are. And that's the that's a hand call. That's what you mimic all the time. You can also do a gobble with the box call. Uh, you can do an excited call. It's or you can just do a, a real quiet uh, tree call. Uh, it's very easy to use, you know, and uh, don't worry about if you, you miss a stroke or a goof up because all turkeys don't sound the same like I said earlier. Thank you, Gary, for the information and the demonstration. Look forward to hearing more Talking Turkey in tomorrow's edition. Thank you as well for joining us, and thanks to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic, spring turkey hunting. Yesterday, we began learning how to talk turkey, Gary, with some of your demonstrations. Let's continue to feature some of those various turkey calls. Uh, next one we use is a slate call. Basically, you know, we've... Uh, our crew uses uh, Jeff Wade's Roosum call. Basically, it's almost like scratching your fingers across a chalkboard. You know, when kids were in school, they did that. And basically, it's the same thing. You've got the first long drawn out, and then it's. But you can also do a, a putt. You can do a purr. You know, you can do the excited call too. But it's a. Uh, it's a, it's a rhythm. The whole thing is rhythm. you got to get the rhythm down. And once you get that down, it's easy. Uh, the toughest call to use 
probably is, and the best call means you aren't doing any movement, is a diaphragm call. Basically, that's something you actually put in your mouth, press against your tongue and hold the, uh, the top of it against the roof of your mouth, and uh, you just basically huff on it. Again, it's a rhythm. You know, another call we might mention, too, is, is a locator call. We talked about those on past shows. In the evening, just before, when they go to roost, uh, you can get a tom in the spring to go- shock gobble. And basically all that is, it's just, you just go, who cooks for you, who cooks for you? And that's the rhythm. It just comes out like this. <coughs> and that'll make them gobble. Or you can use a coyote holler or even a crow caller. Don't use any of your turkey calls because they'll pinpoint you and then you've, you're educating them. Thank you, Gary. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about spring turkey hunting. Gary, Mother Nature can throw a lot at you this time of year. Let's talk about some of the necessary gear needed before we hit the field. You just never know what's going to happen. I've hunted in the heat, I've hunted in the rain, hunted in the snow, I've hunted in uh, in the wind. So uh, generally we wear darker camo on top, we're mossy oak because we're basically leaning against a tree or in a cedar tree or against a pine tree uh, and we wear lighter lighter camel below because we're sitting on the ground kind of breaks us breaks up our our silhouette but yeah you know bring along whatever you think you're going to need rain gear snow camel maybe several different varieties of camel depending on where you're hunting you just want to blend in everything we've got is camel Uh, my boots uh, of course our clothes our cap uh, my shotguns camouflage some of my calls are camouflage I wear camouflage gloves. I wear a camouflage face mask. Some guys use face paint, but I got my fill of that when I was in the Army, so I just wear a face mask. So. Uh, another thing, Gary, decoys, not only is it mating season, but also it can take their eye off of you. Yeah, you bet. That's the whole deal. Uh, get the biggest advantage you can if you can get them to watch a decoy instead of you. And as far as decoys, our crew, our team uses both foldable decoys and full bodies and that all depends on how, where we're hunting how far we have to carry them basically how far we have to hump them uh, basically we use a, a jake which is just a small tom uh, and we use a hen and generally we we'll use the hen in the mating position which is low to the ground so when the other toms see that they think that this one uh, jake is is going to do the deed and, and they'll come over and they'll fight him try to chase him off Thank you, Gary, for the information. Thank you as well for joining us today and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Have a great day. and Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week's topic has been spring turkey hunting, a great sport. Gary, yesterday we began talking about some of the necessary equipment before you hit the field. Let's continue that discussion today. Yeah, you bet. If we're, we're bow hunting, we're hunting out of blinds because it gives you the opportunity to draw your bow. Even if you got a decoy in front of you, uh, you try and pull your bow back uh, within sight of a tom, he's going to catch the movement. So hunting out of a blind is, is the only way to go. Uh, when we're uh, hunting with shotguns, sometimes we'll lay down a camouflage uh, cover in front of us. Sometimes we'll get behind, you know, pre-constructed brush piles or so forth. Uh, I use... Uh, Winchester ammunition. I use the three inch six shot because it patterns best in my shotgun. But uh, no matter how you're hunting, uh, you know, the things we talked about the camouflage, the seat cushion, something to sit on, the uh, decoys are all going to make you uh, more successful uh, in the spring turkey season. Dress enough, Gary. It is a sport of patience because we talk about all this turkey talk. They will sometimes come in silence, so make sure you're patient and looking and observing because they might fool you. Yeah, you bet. I wish I had a quarter for every time that happened where you don't hear a thing and you get up. They'll come in behind you and not gobble, you know, but, uh, you know, before you get up, make sure you check everything over carefully. You look all around you, you know, keep your, listen carefully, I guess, and uh, and don't move until you're totally sure that there's nothing there because nothing will We'll, we'll educate that gobbler quicker than he's coming into a sound and all of a sudden a camouflage hunter stands up and spooks him away. So, Thank you, Gary, for the information today. Thank you as well for joining us. And thanks to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible Monday through Saturday. Until next time.
May your outdoor adventures be great and have a great day. Welcome to the conclusion of this week's Outdoor Adventure with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller, spring turkey hunting Gary. Let's recap. Nothing's more exciting to see a Tom all, all fanned out and gobbling coming your way. Calling is the easiest. Um, you can spot and stalk them, but you can get calls the easiest. Box call is by far the easiest to use. Uh, it's just a rhythm getting it down. Then the slate call, the same thing, the rhythm, uh, and the diaphragm call. also want to mention locator calls the night before when the birds in the trees use a locator call, like an owl call, a coyote holler, or a crow call to get him to give away his position. And the thing is, uh, uh, as far as uh, camo, you know, dark on the top, light on the bottom, bring extra stuff along just in case you have to hunt in snow and so forth. Make sure you got a good pad to sit on because nothing will spoil your day quicker than the cold bottom. Uh, as far as guns and ammunition, I use three three inch Winchester six shot. If you're hunting with a bow, you're probably gonna wanna hunt out of a out of a ground blind to conceal a, when you draw the, draw the bow back. And just as you learned all this information once upon a time and or for the first time now, maybe pass that along to a youngster. Yeah, you bet. Take a kid out, whether it's fishing or hunting or whatever, but take them out, uh, introduce them to the outdoors. Appreciate this week's Outdoor Adventure. So many more just like it can be found online and on the television. How can I go about finding you outside of this radio show? Yeah, well, Outdoorsman Adventure, the television show, airs in eight upper Midwestern states, and uh, you just need to check your local channels for time and listing in South Dakota, North North Dakota, Minnesota, we got Medco Sports Network, Nebraska, the news channel, Nebraska, plus local market, in Iowa, again, local market. And on Facebook, we've got the outdoorsadventure.com and, of course, my Gary Howie Outdoors page. You can catch some of the shows on the Outdoor Channel, myoutdoortv.com. All right, Gary, as always, appreciate the Outdoor Adventure. Look forward to catching up with you again next week. Simon, it's always my pleasure.